G'day, I'm still at it with these cheap AC power and energy meters, this time with the PZEM-004T-100A, which means it uses a current transformer and it can work up to 100 amps. There's a dash 10A, which I believe has a shunt resistor instead of that. The difference between this and all the others is instead of a display like that one, its output is serial. I've got that one there as a comparison while we test this one. That's the one I felt from the previous video was the most accurate, certainly the most precise. It's got four digits for current, the others only had two or three. So uh, yeah, similar setup to it before. Um, I covered that in the previous video, but this time there's a PC though to look at what comes out of this. And the rest of the setup is, I've got a Variac up there and isolation transformer going into this into this junction here. We're measuring that voltage on the bottom meter and that power point goes into this dummy load box where I can switch in bulbs and further loads with these switches and the current drawn by all that is being measured by these two things on the test but also I've got a resistor there that I'm measuring the voltage across with this meter and I've uh, using the math function in that I've told it to divide the reading the voltage reading that it makes by the resistance of this so that what it's actually displaying is the current right volts divided by resistance is current and up the top we've got two HP three four six eights in series with all this so that we're measuring current here 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 and here and with these two. Now they're only good for 3 amps so when I go to a higher current I have to take them out of the circuit. And uh, we're displaying the results of what this comes up with on here. So I'll turn all this on and show you what's going on. Would you believe that for one reason or another this is the fourth time that I've recorded the remainder of this video. Mostly to do with trying to make this stupid LCD screen visible and not have this screen wash out because of being too bright. Uh, I really have to learn how to use this camera. But uh, you might consider giving this video a like just for effort. So, what do we got here? There's our PZEM-004. This is a PZEM-022. Uh, for comparison, that's the best of the displayed ones, I reckon. I've got my resistor down the back there for measuring current with this meter and that meter is being set up to divide the voltage reading that it measures across that by its resistance so that what it displays is current. This HP3468 is also displaying current and we can see what current is measured by this thing and that thing on this computer where I'm displaying what, what I read out of there. Down the bottom we're just showing the voltage coming out of the isolation transformer. So first off with loads disconnected we'll just wind up the voltage and see how much they all agree and you can see this is polling at once every thousand milliseconds every second and it's getting timeouts because there's no main side power on the main side of that thing and it won't it won't work until we get to about 75 volts so winding up the voltage now see down there this is starting to kick in at about 40 to 50 60 say that's still getting timeouts and now that we're at 80 odd it's starting to work and it's displaying values here so let's take it to 100 98 volts 98 100 150 150 147 147 so these are always re always reading a bit low 200 volts 196 196 and finally 240 volts 236 236 so these agree with each other pretty well now, looking at the current, we've got this saying 37 milliamps, that's saying 37 milliamps, this is saying 38, so pretty close. For some reason, this is saying 80. I'm not sure why that is. This uh, resistor down here is uh, at low currents. It's disagreeing with these other three, but I'll take this to be the accurate value. Now, some of that current will be the power needed by this thing, and some will be the power needed by this and its display. So I can disconnect that and the current should have dropped 38, 37, no no 38, 
This is still saying 80. Yeah. Well, it didn't not really much at all, is it? 40, 38. It hasn't changed much. Can you believe that? This is drawing nearly nothing. Hmm. Another question. All right. Now I'll wind the voltage down and turn on some loads. Now I've got the two bulbs running and we're drawing 566 milliamps, 562, 558, 567. So now this is in line with the other three. 150, 664, 669, 660, 668. All within 1% by the look of it. 200 volts, 777, 782, 772, 779, 240 volts. Now these two bulbs are rated, specified at 240 volts and they're 75 watts and 150 watts, so it should be. 225 watts, but 200 watts, 200 watts, so I think these bulbs are fibbing. Currents, 856, 866, still can't read that bloody thing properly, 852, 859. But the currents are all reasonably close to each other. Now, that's, if I turn it down to 130 volts, I can turn on the space heater down the bottom get a bit more current 2.9 amps and that's 287 290 288 287 so they're agreeing it looks a bit high and that's about the limit of this meter I can only take it to three amps it's as much as, it go, as far as it goes so to use a higher current I have to take the HP out of circuit so I'll do that now now I can wind the voltage up to 240 Let's look at 200 first. 200 volts, we're drawing 4.37 amps, 4.34, 4.30. So he's reading a bit high. 240 volts, 5.5 amps roughly, 5.1, 5. Now I can turn on the other load, which is a toast rubbin, to get a bit more load. We've got a tense timer on. Now we're up near. 7 amps, I can take it, turn the voltage up to say 250, and we're drawing 7 amps. 7, they're all in pretty good agreement, so, you know, these meters aren't bad on current, not as bad as I thought they were. It must have just been these silly things that were no good. Now you might notice I've got a sample rate of 1000, I can make it go faster, so I'll make it twice as fast, 500 milliseconds per sample. I don't know if you can read this, but the readings come in pairs, which are identical. And if I change it to 10 poles a second, and you can see the lights flashing at different rates there, now I get 10 readings that are identical. So it seems that this thing is updating its internal values only once a second, and there's no benefit in reading it more frequently than that. Also, it's got a calibration function which I've got had a button here to send that command to it. The manual documents the command but doesn't say under what conditions you should send it because presumably you should be supplying that with a known voltage and passing a known current and then when it is when you issue the calibration command it'll adjust itself to suit but those conditions aren't mentioned in the manual and i read somewhere that you can brick it which i suppose stands to reason you you could calibrate it to nonsense if you didn't have those correct values so disabled that function and you don't really need it anyway because unlike this thing it's got a display this gadget sends its data out to something that can uh, think about it like a computer or, or Arduino or something and you could adjust the values that come out of it to calibrate it and you know take into account of offsets and linearities and gains and you, you could make it very accurate how, how, how good its stability is is another question, but you could calibrate it to produce accurate values if you have equipment that can measure the, the current and voltage correctly, which I suppose I have. Um, I could do that. I did forget a few things to cover, so uh, I've got a few follow-ups to show you. First of all, this accumulated energy that builds up as it multiplies power times time, it's got 0.04 kilowatts in there, kilowatt hours. 
does it remember that when the power's off? So I'll just cut the power. And then we get time out, so this thing should be well and truly off. Turn the power back on. Yep, it's remembered how many kilowatt hours were consumed. That's interesting, isn't it? So it must have some M NV RAM in there. Now, I talked about the calibrate command, which I've disabled because it might brick my device. But the reset energy command, I'm, I'm not, I can issue that. Now, that I'm not handling the response in here properly, so I'll get a timeout error. But it will reset the energy. Just watch that go to zero. Just a hiccup there in the communications, but off it goes with um, the NG reset, so you can do that safely. Notice also power factor 0.08. The current is 38 milliamps, 38 milliamps, and I've got the HP 3468 back in circuit up the top. Don't know if you can see that, but it also says 36, 37 milliamps. I was surprised before that it seems to be this that's consuming it all. So if, if I disconnect. This, this meter, we've hardly lost any current, so it's this thing that's consuming it. If we, the HP is still saying 36.5, if I disconnect this as well, we're down to just sort of noise, uh, a third of a milliamp. And if I turn back this meter, leaving the module disconnected, lucky that was isolated, I just touched that wire. That's why we have isolation transformers. Third of a milliamp gone to two milliamps. So this thing is only drawing one and a half milliamps, as we saw before. But this thing, if I turn him on, the current shoots up. So this thing is consuming 38 milliamps, and it says 0.7 of a watt. Now th this number here is what you get when you multiply that by that, and the power factor, because that voltage times that current comes out to about nine watts, but multiplied by that power factor comes out at 0.7 of a watt. Now, I don't deal with power factors enough for this to come naturally to me, but is, is this thing consuming 0.7 of a watt or 9 watts? I mean, its power factor is low because of the capacitive dropper in its power supply, but what am I getting charged for it if I use this to monitor the energy in my home? Because it, from what I've read, it's the apparent power, the 9 watts, that you get charged for. That's why you should try and get your power factor up to 1, because you you're being charged with energy you're not really receiving the benefit from. So if this thing's drawing 9 watts all the time that's and you're paying for it, that's ridiculous for an energy meter that you've got connected to your house. That, that would get quite substantially expensive over time. So I'm a bit confused there. If anyone can uh, help me out, please do. I think that's all I was wanting to sh show you, that members of the energy consumption after the power is removed and that you can use the reset energy command to reset that value to zero. That this guy draws nearly no current compared to this one. And then there's this confusion over real and apparent power and what, what you're being charged for if you were to use this thing to monitor the energy usage of your house. I have to do some more reading about that. Or, or if someone knows, please let me know. I think that's it. So, uh, yep. Yeah, I hope all this was uh, helpful to you, informative, and please give it a like, maybe subscribe, and I'll catch you later.